start off on this topic, I'll give some background information about this national park. Located about five miles east of Waynesville, Ohio, Caesars Creek came into being in 1971 when the Army Corps of Engineers erected a dam to control flooding in the valley. The Emergency Overflow Control Spillway is where much of the geology of Caesars Creek can be found. The channel exposes prime 445 million year old Ordovician outcrop with an abundance of fossils. But we don't need to get into that just yet. First, let's look into the depositional environment and the time of the Ordovician. Let's have a visual. Here we see Gondwana, off to the lower left, drifting toward the pole. In the mid-latitudes we see Laurentia, Avalonia, and Baltica. Around 445 million years ago, the United States as we know it now was near the southern tropic latitudes, dominated by warm shallow oceans and a prime location for flourishing life. The Iapetus Ocean began to close and brought North America and European continents together, known as the Taconic Orogeny. This event formed a series of island arcs and mountain chains just east of Ohio, which now preserve ancient life we can view from Alabama to Newfoundland. Ordinarily, Caesars Creek would not exist and would be buried deep beneath the surface. However, we are thanks to tectonic activity that created the Cincinnati Arch. The arch is an anticlinal geologic structure that started forming somewhere around 400 million years ago. Heavy erosion ate away at the uplifted material and exposed the Ordovician rocks beneath. Uplift and erosion continued through the late Pennsylvanian, leaving the area as we now see it. The best visual depiction of the arch is this display I found from the Geofair. Notice the anticlinal structure and how it's been truncated at the top, leaving the younger deposits around the center basin. Okay, and now for my personal favorite Caesars Creek attribute, fossils. You find them everywhere. They're literally scattered across all surfaces. Many visitors often pass up collecting the most common fauna, such as brachiopods or corals, and go for trilobites instead. Although they can be found, trilobites are pesky to find at times and often require diligent work, as many of them are as tiny as a BB. I won't get into any specific descriptions, but here are just a few of the many common species found here. During your visit, don't forget to stop by the visitor center, especially if you want to collect fossils. You must obtain a collector's permit, free of charge, and display it in the window of your vehicle. Please also note that visitors are not permitted to take any samples larger than the palm of their hand, and that the use of tools such as hammers or chisels is strictly forbidden. Good luck on your search, and have a wonderful geologic day.